All right, we did page one. Unfortunately for us, there are five pages, five pages of content. There's more on Reddit and there's more on her own Twitter. So, okay, uh, Mike McKinley of 95MTG. She owes me $2,080 at Star City Richmond. She wanted to buy something, needed cash and said she would send me PayPal, but her phone was over on the charger has since made excuses, bailed on events, and ghosted. 95MTG, I'm pretty sure that's a very big brand. So she screwed over that brand. And Ryan McKinley, who probably is the brother of Mike McKinley, I gave Kayla $1,000 the exact same time as Mike McKinley. Pretty sure it was SG, SCG Richmond when we gave it to her, and she claims she'll get us PayPal to pay it back. She has claimed to have cash, but keeps bailing on events where she says she can give it to me. So that's 95MTG. I've seen their buy list around YouTube uh, or around Reddit. They seem like a legit company to me. So both brothers gave her a combined $3,080, which she did not pay back. Mikey, she did social media for Top Deck. These are big companies she's working with. So, I mean, the fact that these people... Uh, and they have their names, they have their tags. The fact that these people are calling her out is a big deal. This isn't some ex-boyfriend who had used, who gave his da dying dad's account for her to use. No, these are actual brands, right? Brands. Uh, she did social media stuff for Top Deck briefly, but we were pretty disappointed with her performance. We'd check in and there was always an excuse. So we ended up having to redo a lot of her work. I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt and increase the pay for one month since I was assured we ori didn't originally contract for enough hours to have everything done that we wanted. So the reason she did a poor job was she needs more money. We gave her more money. Nothing happened. Surprise. Only fans, right? Overall, after the pay increase, she was fairly non-existent and clearly just pocketed the money, which amounted to $600 for that month. Told her we were done around halfway through the month since it was clear the money was gone and she wasn't going to do the job we expected. I also paid to have 10 hours of footage edited from one of our events, which came out to be a few hundred dollars. Was told it was done several times and a link would be posted, but it, was been, it has been months and no link has been received. Even had other people on the team and people involved with footage ask for it and no one ever received the edited footage because guess what? There was none. Only some OnlyFans for this, right? That's the only thing they care about. At this point, I can only assume nothing was edited and just accepted my loss. Glad to have cut ties when I did since it's clear this sort of behavior is rampant. Also, a large reason that she was bought on was for her, quote, experience doing social media for several large brands in the MTG space, most notably SGCG. However, it, it came comes to my attention that this was all a lie. Lying on your resume. Hmm. A non. See, used, used to be also banned from buying merch at GPS for chargebacks. Monty Burton. So these are people who are putting their names forward in these allegations. These aren't Jane Doe's or right John Doe's. These are no. These are people basing their reputation on her. These are people who will put their name against hers, which isn't even a real name, by the way. You know that that's that's the whole interesting thing about OnlyFans, right? Everyone's got fake name. So why not just use that fake name in real life? You know, <laughs> you might as well, right? Okay, so let, let's continue on. She owes me 15K at one point. I collected off her at Minnesota. A min, yeah, Minna, Minnesota. After a year of nonsense. So what she's doing is he's paying back people she owes money to by scamming more people. Do you guys understand why it takes her so long to pay back these amounts of money? It's because she has to scam some other new sucker to then use their dying dad bank account, which she did. We, we covered that in the first part. Anonymous judge. She used my name to get approval to host a judge conference with FOIL. She did host the conference, but staffed it all of her friends for bullshit presentations and didn't let me contribute at all. She ended up stealing like $50 worth of promo from me, maybe closer to 100 Supposedly she did this with other judges too. 
Yeah, the MTG judge system is mud effing messed up, man. A lot of predators there. Don't, uh, Elliot R, don't have any personal stories about money, but C is demonstrably lied. C claimed that multiple judge conferences I was present at that C played at Pro Tour. C hasn't. And then the MTG ELO project posted pictures on their Facebook claiming to be a Stanford fellow. Fake assertion simply by Googling the certificate and the photo. These are just provable lies that immediately come to mind. I know personality of many others that aren't my stories to say, share. A non-judge. C was sent a bunch of judge foils to run conferences. He was supposed to run, return extras. Instead, C kept the rest and tried to sell them in bulk to local game stores who refused to buy them. No, oh, seems like a pattern of behavior is here. Anon, confirmed by Rodney, convinced her ex to co-sign on a test log. Like, you know, like, this person has no talent, isn't even a real money effing magic player, and she's able to milk, milk, I mean, I mean, holy shit, man. She, she convinced that dude to sign on the credit card and put a credit card in her na his name, and then she convinced a dude to give her, like, her dad, dying dad's, like, bank account, like... And now they co-signed in a Tesla. She found on a lot saying she would pay for it in full when she got the refund from Tesla she had ordered. She didn't make any payments and ruined his credit score, claiming her identity had been stolen. Oh, how, well, the, very classic, right? That's how she got the credit card from that one dude was he claimed that her stepmom stole, an evil stepmom, my God, stole the, I mean, oh, it's gross. Like, But at the same time, you know, I don't want to victim blame, but there's a lot of horny guys here who just got effed. They thought they were going to be the ones doing the effing, but they, they didn't understand OnlyFans. You only get effed there. You don't eff anyone on OnlyFans. Uh, claiming her identity has been stolen, she didn't have access to money, paid off the car in full, went threatened with legal action. Oh, see, okay, I understand what's happening here. Like, if you threaten to sue her, she probably doesn't want to be sued. Interesting. As a lawyer, I, I love this stuff, right? Because, hey, if you guys have a claim, let's fight. Let's fight against her, not against you. You're the idiot who... <laughs> uh, a non-judge. She lied about attending Stanford. <sighs> she doesn't look like she attends Stanford. Come on, guys. Like, lying about attending Stanford is so stupid in today's generation. Right? Because you can see on LinkedIn, if, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure she doesn't have LinkedIn, that like, hey, or did you attend Stanford? Then you should have people who attended Stanford with you in that year. Also, she claimed she was accepted for Harvard Law. Come on, get the fuck out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? Does he make that claim? Okay, if she was accepted to Harvard Law, she doesn't need a scam like this. Minimal is a quarter million dollars outside Harvard Law. I mean, come on, dude. Like, I'm a lawyer, guys. The, you would make... The reason I have so many magic cards, anime figures, Pokemon cards, because I make good money. If, if you make this type of money, you're not going to need to steal your boyfriend's dying dad's bank account, my dude. You're just not. And you probably don't play Magic the Gathering. Honest to God, if you attended Harvard Law and you play Magic the Gathering, your name's probably J.D. Vance who attended Yale Law School. Yeah, same difference. 